Good morning, guys. It's Kevin here in the shop this morning to do some much needed knife sharpening. And today I want to talk about a few pitfalls that I myself fell into when trying to learn how to sharpen on Japanese whetstones freehand. Hopefully something I have to say here will allow you to tweak your technique and get that razor sharp edge you're looking for. Let's get started. Get comfortable. This isn't honing, this is sharpening, which means you're going to be here for a little while. And you don't want to be in your Sunday's best in a cramped position. Mm. Whether that means standing up over the sink for you or sitting down makes no difference to me, but you want to be comfortable. For me, that means sitting down. I prefer a nail chair, which is a chair, a backless chair that you kneel on. It keeps your back straight. The second component of this is you want to get the stone up off of the table a little bit so that you have that knuckle clearance that you're going to need in order to sharpen comfortably. You can do this on the cheap and just get a block and put a towel under that, or you can get some kind of holder that spans the sink or a pool like I have here. Either way, get comfortable. More light, more light, more light. Too many times do I see some poor sap trying to get a razor sharp edge in his dank dark shed and he can barely even see what he's doing. Is it possible? Yeah, if you know what you're doing, but if you're struggling in a dank dark shed, chances are you need more light. More light. Use more pressure. It may not seem like it, but early on when you're trying to establish that bevel, you're pushing quite hard to get that stone to cut that steel. Bob Kramer suggests about four to six pounds, but let's be honest, unless you have a kitchen scale to push on, it doesn't tell you that much. And even then, it doesn't really tell you that much. So suffice it to say, you need to push harder. <clears throat> Lighten up, guys. I know I just told you to apply more pressure, but when you get to the last few strokes on each stone, you really want to think microscopically. You're just trying to fold that wire edge over on each side. And if you apply too much pressure at this stage, you're going to roll the edge. So lighten up. So no shortcuts can mean a couple of things. But the main thing that it communicates to me is choosing the appropriate stone for the dullness of a particular knife. This knife here is one of the two knives that I carry at work every day, and it gets seriously abused. And because of that, I'm going to start on a 120 grit stone, which is super coarse. But if I were to say start on a 500 grit stone, I would have to spend a lot more time on that stone than I would on this 120. What I see too often is guys starting their sharpening process on a stone they should be finishing on. For instance, a 1000 grit. 1000 is already into the polishing phase as far as I'm concerned. So don't be afraid to start on a lower grit stone. So there is no right way to sharpen a knife, but there are several wrong ways and they're all gonna fall under the header of technique. Probably when you're first getting started, you're gonna fall into the habit of trying to sharpen a knife the same way you saw somebody else do it, but that might not suit you. I would argue that you should let the knife dictate the technique. For instance, here I have a Scandi grind, which is mostly flat. And when I sharpen Scandi grinds, I mostly just hold the bevel against the stone and pull back and forth like this. I use push and pull strokes on a mostly flat bellied knife like this. But whenever I'm sharpening a uh, knife that has a fairly steep belly, I'm going to use full sweeps like this. So don't be afraid to switch up your technique depending on what knife you're sharpening. It's not about money, it's about time. Learning how to sharpen freehand is gonna take you a while and you're gonna be frustrated at I first. am so over. Hopefully some of these tips will help you interpret experience quicker, but you're gonna have to put the time in. 
And don't make the mistake of going down the road of buying more and more expensive equipment, thinking that that's all you need. If you can't sharpen on a $20 budget stone, you're not going to be able to sharpen on an $80 Japanese whetstone. Don't misunderstand me, there's nothing wrong with expensive Japanese whetstones. In fact, there's a lot right about them. But you're getting a diminishing return. You're paying 50% more for something that's only 15% better. If you can't sharpen on a $20 combo stone like this, this is the 400 1000, you're not going to be able to do any better on a $100 Nanawa stone. So start with the combo stone. The paper test is not the be-all, end-all of sharpness. Yes, a knife should be as sharp as you can get it, but it doesn't have to be razor sharp to do what it needs to do. <gasps> so a lot of guys are frustrated that they can't get their knives to just glide right through paper. See this? Yeah, it'll cut, but not great. It will, however, paw pairs just fine. Look at that. Can I make this sharper? Absolutely. Do I need to? Not really. How about cutting what you're going to cut with them before you start complaining that they're not sharp? For instance, if this can cut tomatoes, it's sharp enough. So go cut tomatoes before you cut paper. That's my point. And last but not least, strop it. Your knife will never be as sharp as it can be unless you run it across a piece of leather. So I just want to quickly shout out a few people I learned important lessons from. And the first is Sonuro Han. He's a Japanese knife maker that's still sharpening all of his knives by hand. And what I learned from him is that you can switch hands and pull the knife towards you in both directions. You can see here I switch from my right hand to my left hand. And that's how I sharpen almost all of my knives. Next is Alex from Outdoors55 on YouTube. He taught me that you can do a lot with a little. So this is a cheap oil stone here, and he um, demonstrated on several occasions that you can get a knife super sharp on really cheap stones. He also showed me that you can sharpen like this, which I'd never seen anyone do, which is sideways standing up on a workbench. Um, this is a super cheap knife on a super cheap oil stone, and you can see here, it will shave hairs. Next up is Ricky over at Burrfection. Honestly, I've learned so much from the guy, but the most important technique I've learned is how to walk my fingers back and forth the blade like I'm doing here in this clip. I've mentioned Kyle before, but Kyle Noseworthy, he goes by the Newfoundland Hobbyist on YouTube. He's a custom knife maker, and I've learned a lot from the guy, but uh, he's really shown me just how sharp a knife can be. And I want to shout out one of our own here. He goes by Seth, S-E-F-F, -F, on YouTube. The guy doesn't post very much, but in the last video, the dude was whittling hairs. That's right, hair whittling sharp. Go check him out. He clearly knows how to sharpen a knife. And last but certainly not least is master knife maker Bob Kramer. There's a couple of his sharpening videos kicking about on YouTube, and I learned this technique from him, which is highly aggressive and highly locomotive, but highly effective. Well, that's about all I got time for, guys, but enjoy. I hope you learned something. Thanks. See you on the next one.